Mark Harmon is an American actor who also had a background in football before making a name for himself in entertainment. Most people recognize him from his long-running role as Leroy Jethro Gibbs on NCIS. However, his acting career spans back to the early 1970s when he appeared in a variety of television roles. Some of his memorable characters include Dr. Robert Caldwell on St. Elsewhere, Detective Dickie Cobb on Reasonable Doubts, and Dr. Jack McNeil on Chicago Hope. He also had roles in movies like Summer School, Prince of Bel-Air, Stealing Home, Wyatt Earp, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, Freaky Friday, and Chasing Liberty. Recently, Harmon opened up about his career and personal life, offering fans a closer look at his journey. One of Harmon's standout moments was when he played Secret Service agent Simon Donovan on The West Wing in 2002. His performance earned him an Emmy Award nomination. His portrayal of NCIS Special Agent Leroy Jethro Gibbs began with a guest role in two episodes of JAG, which led to him starring in NCIS from 2003 until 2021. Stay tuned as we dive into the behind-the-scenes aspects of Mark Harmon's life, covering both his personal moments and the key highlights of his career. Early Life Mark Harmon was born in Burbank, California, as the youngest of three children. His family was a mix of sports and entertainment. His father, Tom Harmon, was a famous football player who won the Heisman Trophy and later became a broadcaster, while his mother, Elise Knox, born Elsie Lillian Cornbrath, was a model, actress, and artist. Mark also had two older sisters. Kristen Nelson, who was an actress and painter, was married to singer Rick Nelson before they divorced. His other sister, Kelly Harmon, was an actress and model who was married to John DeLorean, the well-known car manufacturer. On his mother's side, his grandparents were Austrian immigrants, giving him a unique family heritage. After finishing high school at Harvard-Westlake in 1970, Mark attended Pierce College in Los Angeles, where he completed a two-year associate degree. He played football during his time at Pierce, and his performance caught the attention of some major college football programs. Ultimately, Mark decided to continue his football journey at UCLA, choosing it over Oklahoma. Even though Oklahoma had a much stronger record at the time, UCLA had struggled, but Mark saw potential in the program. When Mark transferred to UCLA, he became the starting quarterback for the 1972 and 1973 seasons. His first game as quarterback led to a major upset when UCLA defeated the top-ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers, who were two-time defending national champions. The Bruins were underdogs, but they managed to pull off a 20-17 victory with a last-minute field goal. During his senior year, Mark received the National Football Foundation Award for All-Round Excellence, a testament to his abilities on and off the field. Over his two years as a quarterback in Coach Pepper Rogers' system, UCLA achieved an impressive 17-5 record. Despite his success in college football, Mark was not selected in the 1974 NFL Draft. Mark graduated from UCLA in 1974, earning a BA in Communications with Honors. In 2010, he was inducted into the Pierce College Athletic Hall of Fame, recognizing his contributions to their football program. Career After completing his college education, Mark Harmon thought about starting a career in advertising or law. However, he began working as a merchandising director but quickly realized that acting was his true passion. Throughout much of his career, he took on roles related to law enforcement and medical professions, showing his versatility as an actor. One of Mark's earliest appearances on national television, aside from his time as an athlete, was in a commercial for Kellogg's Product 19 cereal, alongside his father, Tom Harmon, who was the longtime spokesperson for the product. Thanks to his sister Kristen's connections with Ozzie and Harriet Nelson, he got his first acting job in an episode of Ozzie's Girls. Following that, he landed guest roles in several popular shows like Adam 12, Police Woman, and Emergency in mid-1975. He also appeared in a pilot episode called 905 Wild, which was meant to become a series about two animal control officers in Los Angeles, but it was never picked up. Producer Jack Webb, who was behind several series at that time, later cast Mark and Sam, a short-lived show from 1978 about an LAPD officer and his canine partner. Before this, Mark received an Emmy nomination for his role as Robert Dunlap in the TV movie Eleanor and Franklin, The White House Years. In 1978, he played Captain John McIntosh in three episodes of the miniseries Centennial, where he portrayed a noble Union cavalry officer. Throughout the mid to late 1970s, 
Mark made guest appearances on various TV shows like Laverne and Shirley, Del Vecchio, and The Hardy Boys' Nancy Drew Mysteries. He also had supporting roles in movies such as Comes a Horseman, 1978, and Beyond the Poseidon Adventure, 1979. He then secured a co-starring role on the 1979 action series 240 Robert, where he played Deputy Dwayne Thibodeau. The series followed the missions of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department Emergency Services detail, but it was also short-lived. In 1980, Mark landed a regular role in the primetime soap opera Flamingo Road, playing Fielding Carlisle, the husband of Morgan Fairchild's character. Despite having good ratings at first, the show was canceled after two seasons. After that, he took on the role of Dr. Robert Caldwell in the acclaimed series St. Elsewhere in 1983. He appeared on the show for nearly three seasons, leaving in early 1986 when his character contracted HIV. One of the first times a recurring character on television dealt with this issue. His character's off-screen death from AIDS was mentioned two years later. During the mid-1980s, Mark also became the face of Coors Regular Beer, appearing in commercials for the brand. His career reached significant heights in 1986 when he was named People Magazine's Sexiest Man Alive. After leaving St. Elsewhere, he starred in TV movies like Prince of Bel-Air, alongside Kirstie Alley, and The Deliberate Stranger, where he portrayed the infamous serial killer Ted Bundy. His film career continued to flourish with roles in Let's Get Harry in 1986 and the lead in the comedy Summer School in 1987, again starring Kirstie Alley and future JAG and NCIS actor Patrick Labuteau. Mark made a brief return to episodic television in 1987 with a role on the show Moonlighting, playing Sam Crawford, who was Sybil Shepard's love interest, for four episodes. He also starred in the 1987 TV movie After the Promise. In 1988, he worked alongside Sean Connery and Meg Ryan in the film The Presidio, and he co-starred with Jodie Foster in Stealing Home. After his 1989 comedy Worth Winning, he returned to television in various TV movies. Mark's next regular TV role was as Chicago detective Dickie Cobb in the NBC series Reasonable Doubts, which ran for two seasons from 1991 to 1993. In 1993, he made a guest appearance as a rodeo clown in an episode of the CBS comedy western series Hearts of the West, where he worked with future NCIS castmate Sean Murray. In 1995, Mark starred in the ABC series Charlie Grace, where he played a private investigator. Unfortunately, the series lasted only one season. After that, he returned to ensemble medical dramas, landing the role of Dr. Jack McNeil on Chicago Hope, where he worked from 1996 to 2000. He also portrayed astronaut Wally Shira in an episode of the 1998 miniseries From the Earth to the Moon. In May 2002, Mark Harmon took on the role of Secret Service Special Agent Simon Donovan in a four-episode story arc on the West Wing. This performance earned him his second Emmy Award nomination, which was significant because it came exactly 25 years after his first nomination. The creator of JAG and NCIS, Donald P. Belisario, noticed Harmon in this role and invited him to guest star in two episodes of JAG in April 2003. It was during these episodes that Harmon introduced the character of NCIS agent Leroy Jethro Gibbs. Starting in September 2003, Harmon became a regular on the CBS drama NCIS, where he portrayed Gibbs for many years. His work on the show garnered him six nominations at the People's Choice Awards, and he won the award for Favorite TV Crime Drama Actor in 2017. During his time on NCIS, he had the chance to reunite with three of his former co-stars from Chicago Hope, Rocky Carroll, Lauren Hawley, and Jane Brooke. Since 2008, Harmon has also taken on the role of producer and executive producer for the series. In the fourth episode of the show's 19th season, Harmon's character Gibbs exited the series as a regular. This departure was set in motion by events that unfolded during the previous season's finale. Beyond acting, Mark Harmon has participated in various other projects. In 2003, he had a supporting role in the remake of the comedy film Freaky Friday. He has also acted in several stage productions in Los Angeles and Toronto. At the Cass Theatre in Los Angeles, he performed in plays such as Wrestlers and The Wager. In the late 1980s, he was part of the Canadian premiere of the play Key Exchange. He has also participated in multiple productions of Love Letters, where he had the chance to act alongside his wife, Pam Dauber. 
Mark Harmon received the 2,482nd star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame on October 1, 2012, marking a significant achievement in his career. In 2014, he launched a production company named Wings Productions, which produced NCIS New Orleans. As of 2018, he has been involved as a producer for a new CBS series based on the best-selling Prey novels by author John Sanford, which have sold over 30 million copies worldwide, with the last 10 books reaching numbered one on the New York Times bestseller list. Additionally, Mark Harmon directed two episodes of Chicago Hope in 1999 and 2000, as well as two episodes of Boston Public in 2002. In 2023, he collaborated with retired NCIS Special Agent Leon Carroll Jr., to release a book titled Ghosts of Honolulu, a Japanese spy, a Japanese-American spy hunter, and the untold story of Pearl Harbor. In this project, Harmon also narrated the audiobook version. Mark Harmon is set to expand his role in the upcoming series NCIS Origins, following his confirmed appearance in the pilot. This marks a significant moment for fans, as it's been years since Harmon's character, Leroy Jethro Gibbs, retired in Naktok Bay, Alaska. Despite his absence from Washington, D.C., even during notable events like Ducky Mallard's death, Harmon's return is generating buzz. He will narrate the storylines of NCIS Origins, which delves into Gibbs' early days with the Naval Investigative Service, NIS. In addition to narrating, Harmon will make a physical appearance in the pilot episode. A recent report from TV Line indicates that Harmon will make occasional on-screen appearances throughout the series, as the older Gibbs recounts his origins. This development comes as part of an extensive feature on the show, which includes insights from co-showrunner David J. North. While details about the timing and frequency of his appearances remain under wraps, it's clear that his involvement goes beyond just a one-time cameo. The decision to recast Young Gibbs with actor Austin Stowell was necessary due to the storytelling demands of the prequel. While Sean and Mark Harmon previously portrayed Gibbs in flashbacks on the main NCIS show, a fresh face was needed for this series. As for whether Harmon's participation in NCIS Origins might open the door for his return to other franchise installments, such as NCIS or the upcoming NCIS Tony and Ziva, remains uncertain. His last interactions with Ziva suggest that he could be compelled to emerge from retirement if her family is threatened. With Gibbs' absence noted during Ducky's tribute episode, the prequel offers a narrative space that allows him to remain in Alaska while he narrates his origins. Yet, as NCIS, Origins develops, it must strike a balance. While Harmon's presence is a major draw, the focus should primarily be on Stowell's portrayal of Gibbs. The series aims to unveil new insights into the character's backstory while leveraging Harmon's connection to attract viewers. Overall, Harmon's return to the franchise is an exciting development, and fans are keen to see how NCIS Origins unfolds especially with the promise of new revelations about a character who has been a staple of the franchise for nearly two decades. Mark Harmon has recently embarked on an exciting new venture by authoring a book that delves into the history surrounding the formation of what eventually became the NCIS. In his own words, he clarifies, I left the show, I didn't retire. This statement highlights his ongoing passion for storytelling and the importance he places on learning from history, noting that, Things tend to repeat themselves. Harmon provides insights into the book, describing it as an exploration of the early days leading to the establishment of NCIS. He emphasizes that the agents involved were really a different breed, suggesting that their experiences and contributions are worth highlighting. Harmon aims to reveal aspects of their work that have remained largely unknown, stressing the significance of what these agents accomplished during a pivotal time. He believes that this narrative is crucial as it sheds light on important work they were doing, and no one knew about it. While Harmon acknowledges that he finds time to engage in various activities during his spare time, he also reflects on the demands of working on NCIS. He misses the camaraderie he shared with his fellow cast and crew members, indicating that the work environment was a substantial part of his life. Harmon candidly shares, I've got time to do whatever I want to, whether it's planning family dinners or taking trips, expressing gratitude for the flexibility his current situation offers. In addition to his writing endeavors, Harmon has taken steps to explore new opportunities in acting. He recently signed with the Gersh Agency, which represents a roster of notable talents including Brendan Fraser, Allison Janney, Patricia Arquette, and Mandy Moore. This move could signal a potential return to the screen for Harmon, 
even as he focuses on his book project. Harmon's extensive television career spans several decades, making him a familiar face to viewers. Even though he is not currently involved in any acting projects, the desire to return to the screen might be on the horizon for him. Personal life Mark Harmon comes from a family with a strong background in both sports and the arts. He is the son of football player Tom Harmon and actress Elise Knox. He has two sisters, Kelly, who is an actress and model, and Kristen, who is an actress and painter. Sadly, Kristen passed away from a heart attack on April 27, 2018. Mark Harmon has been happily married to actress Pam Dauber since March 21, 1987. Together, they have two sons. One of their sons, Sean, played a young version of Gibbs in several episodes of NCIS. The family tends to keep a low profile, often avoiding the public eye and rarely appearing together in public settings. Mark is also related to some well-known figures. He was the brother-in-law of musician Ricky Nelson and car magnate John DeLorean. He is the uncle of actress Tracy Nelson and singers Matthew and Gunnar Nelson, who make up the rock duo Nelson. Mark Harmon's recognition as the sexiest man alive is a notable highlight in his career, but it wasn't necessarily received with enthusiasm at home. His wife, Pam Dauber, had a rather candid and less than favorable reaction to the title. Harmon discovered he had been given this title in a rather casual setting. He was enjoying a game of basketball with friends when he unexpectedly came across the cover of People magazine plastered on both backboards of the court. He recalls, I'd done an interview with People about leaving St. Elsewhere, and I went up to play basketball, and both backboards on either side of the court were plastered with the sexiest man alive cover. This revelation caught him off guard, highlighting the sometimes surreal nature of celebrity. Despite the accolades and the recognition, Dauber's opinion reflects a more grounded perspective on the title. The dynamics of their relationship, characterized by their shared values and down-to-earth attitudes, suggest that such honors may not carry the same weight at home as they do in the public eye. The couple, married since 1987, tends to keep their family life private, focusing more on their personal connections than on external accolades. This glimpse into their relationship illustrates how the title of Sexiest Man Alive, while a notable achievement for Harmon, is perceived differently within the intimate context of their family life. Dauber's reaction may serve as a reminder that personal relationships often prioritize authenticity and connection over public recognition. Mark Harmon and Pam Dauber, both well-known figures in the entertainment industry, have prioritized keeping their family life private while raising their two sons, Sean and Ty. They have cultivated a low-profile lifestyle, choosing to stay away from the public eye as much as possible. Dauber expressed in a 1987 interview with People, that they are not trying to keep secrets but simply want to protect their family from the media spotlight. Mark echoed this sentiment in a 2017 conversation with TV Insider, emphasizing their preference for a quiet home life without engaging in social media. A significant motivation behind Harmon's long tenure on NCIS was to spend more time with his family, as he wanted to be present for his sons during their formative years. He shared that the show allowed him to be more available at home, enabling him to partake in simple family activities like making pancakes on Saturday mornings. Despite their desire for privacy, both Sean and Ty have pursued careers in the entertainment field. Sean Harmon, the couple's eldest son, was born on April 25, 1988, in Burbank, California. Growing up in a household filled with actors, he expressed his aspiration to follow in his parents' footsteps from a young age. Sean made his acting debut by portraying a younger version of his father's iconic character Gibbs on NCIS. His first appearance in this role came in 2008 during the show's sixth season, and he has made several additional appearances since, the most recent being in a season 18 episode in 2020. Beyond acting, Sean has carved out a niche for himself as a stunt performer and coordinator, specializing in fight scenes. His expertise has been showcased in various projects, including the film Dumb and Dumber 2. He credits his 12 years of experience in Muay Thai kickboxing as instrumental in his stunt work. Sean enjoys a range of hobbies, including creating art and participating in outdoor activities like horseback riding and surfing. Ty Christian Harmon, born on June 25, 1992, is Mark and Pam's younger son. Unlike his family members who have primarily performed in front of the camera, Ty has pursued a career behind the scenes as a screenwriter. He collaborated with Sean on a short film titled Catholic Schoolgirl Chainsaw Showdown in 2012, showcasing his talent and creativity in the film industry. Ty comes from a family with a rich legacy in acting and sports. 
His lineage includes notable figures such as his grandmother Elise Knox, a celebrated actress, and his grandfather Tom Harmon, a Heisman Trophy-winning football player. Despite their success, Mark and Pam have emphasized the importance of character and integrity in their son's upbringing. Mark expressed pride in who Sean and Ty have become as individuals, while Pam shares a mother's pride in her son's accomplishments. Ty married Madeline Harmon in February 2021. After five years of dating, marking a new chapter in his life as he balances his personal and professional pursuits. Together, Sean and Ty represent the next generation of the Harmon family, continuing the legacy of creativity and hard work that their parents have established while maintaining a sense of privacy and authenticity in their lives. In 1987, Mark Harmon sought custody of his nephew Sam, who is Kristen's son. He raised concerns about Kristen's ability to parent, stating she was not capable of providing a good home. The custody battle between Mark Harmon and his sister Kristen Nelson in 1987 was deeply rooted in personal struggles and family dynamics complicated by trauma, addiction, and the untimely death of Kristen's ex-husband, Rick Nelson. Mark Harmon, known for his roles in various television shows, including St. Elsewhere and, later, NCIS, and his sister, Kristen, the daughter of the late Tom Harmon, a celebrated football player, and Elise Knox, a prominent actress, had grown up in the spotlight. The family had a legacy of public attention, and the pressures that came with it seemed to have taken a toll, particularly on Kristen. Kristen's marriage to Rick Nelson, a rock and roll star known for hits like Garden Party and Hello Mary Lou, ended tumultuously. Their relationship faced many challenges, including a high-profile divorce in the early 1980s and the tragic plane crash in 1985 that claimed Rick's life. The loss not only affected Kristen, but also had a profound impact on their son, Sam. As Kristen struggled with the emotional fallout from her husband's death, she turned to prescription drugs, leading to her entering a rehabilitation program. During her absence, Sam lived with Mark Harmon and Pam Dauber, who became his primary caregivers. This arrangement was initially meant to provide stability for Sam, but it also led to increasing tensions between the siblings. The courtroom proceedings revealed the complexities of their family dynamics. Mark and Pam argued that Sam felt unsafe and unstable living with Kristen, citing her erratic behavior and struggles with substance abuse. They believed that living with them would provide a more secure environment for him. Testimony during the hearings highlighted Sam's fear of returning home, with Pam Dauber claiming that he often expressed a desire to stay with them due to his concerns about his mother's behavior. The legal struggle came to a head when Mark Harmon ultimately dropped his bid for custody. The decision to end the fight appeared to signal a desire for family reconciliation. As Kristen Nelson emerged from the courtroom, she expressed relief and happiness, stating that she and Sam would enter family counseling together. The agreement allowed Sam to return to his mother, with Harmon retaining visitation rights. This compromise indicated a recognition of the importance of a child's relationship with both parents, despite the challenges they faced. The case highlighted the difficulties many families encounter when navigating the aftermath of addiction, grief, and the search for stability in the wake of loss. It underscored the emotional toll on children who are caught in the middle of parental disputes, especially in high-profile families where public scrutiny can complicate private struggles. The resolution of the custody battle was not just a legal victory for Kristen, but also an opportunity for healing within the family, emphasizing the importance of support and understanding in overcoming personal and familial challenges. In addition to his acting career, Mark Harmon had a brief venture into baseball. In 1988, he became part owner of a minor league baseball team called the San Bernardino Spirit. Interestingly, this was the same season that Ken Griffey Jr. played for the Spirit before making his major league debut with the Seattle Mariners the following year. Harmon utilized the team and their home field, Fiscalini Field, for the opening and closing scenes of his film Stealing Home, showcasing his dual interests in sports and acting. Mark Harmon has made a significant impact through his charitable endeavors, particularly in Oklahoma, where he has hosted the Stars and Strikes Celebrity Weekend for 10 years. This annual event has become a cherished tradition, showcasing Harmon's dedication not only to his roots but also to giving back to the community. The event has raised an impressive $2.5 million over the years, benefiting organizations like the Ronald McDonald House Charities of Oklahoma City and the Oklahoma City Indian Clinic. The foundation for this charity baseball game began when Dr. Wright, an orthopedic surgeon who moved to Oklahoma, approached Harmon with the idea. Harmon, 
known for his role on the CBS crime drama NCIS, eagerly agreed to participate. His involvement turned the event into a star-studded affair, attracting many former athletes and celebrities who joined Harmon's team, the Bombers, to compete against local teams like the Outlaws. Harmon's connection to Oklahoma is deep-rooted. He considers it a second home. This bond is partly due to his family background, with his father, Tom Harmon, being a celebrated athlete in his own right, a Heisman Trophy winner at the University of Michigan. Mark Harmon was also a standout athlete, having played as a quarterback for UCLA. His athletic prowess adds an authentic touch to the celebrity game, where participants not only engage in friendly competition, but also contribute to worthy causes. The atmosphere during these charity games is filled with camaraderie and a spirit of fun, with teams like the Bombers featuring well-known former athletes, including Wally Joyner and Rick Sutcliffe. Over the years, while the Outlaws have strived to claim victory, they've only managed a single tie against the Bombers, highlighting the competitive edge that Harmon and his teammates bring to the field. Harmon's commitment to the charity event is evident in his willingness to prioritize it above all else, even when faced with the demands of his acting career. There's a notable instance where he flew back from Europe, where he was filming a movie, just to participate in the game after a studio executive suggested he could simply write a check instead. Harmon's response, prioritizing his presence over monetary contributions, illustrates his genuine investment in the cause and the community. The success of the Stars and Strikes Celebrity Weekend not only raises funds for important charitable initiatives, but also fosters a sense of community, bringing together fans, families, and celebrities in a shared mission to support those in need. Through his continued involvement, Harmon exemplifies how public figures can leverage their fame to make a positive difference, highlighting the profound impact of charity work in local communities. His approachability and kindness, as described by those involved in the event, have solidified his reputation as a beloved figure both on and off the field. However, there have been times when Mark had to face his struggles. In 1996, a dramatic incident unfolded on the street where actor Mark Harmon lived, highlighting not only his quick thinking but also his courage. This event involved a car crash that resulted in a terrifying and dangerous situation for two teenage boys. The incident began when two teenage boys were driving down Harmon Street. Their car, for reasons that weren't fully disclosed, crashed violently, leading to a fire that quickly engulfed the vehicle. The driver managed to escape, but his passenger, Colin Specht, found himself trapped inside. Unable to free himself from the burning wreck, the situation was dire, as smoke and flames threatened Colin's life. Harmon, who was nearby when the accident occurred, witnessed the chaotic scene unfolding before him. With no time to waste, he sprang into action. Recognizing the urgency of the situation, he quickly grabbed a sledgehammer from his garage. This bold decision to act rather than wait for help demonstrated a clear understanding of the risks involved. He approached the car, where flames were already licking at the windows. Without hesitation, Harmon broke the car's window with the sledgehammer, creating an opening through which Colin could escape. The impact of Harmon's actions was immediate. He was able to pull Colin from the car just in time, saving him from what could have been a tragic outcome. Colin later recounted the harrowing experience during interviews, emphasizing how crucial Harmon's intervention was to his survival. He stated that he would not be alive if Harmon had not taken the initiative to save him. Colin's gratitude for Harmon's heroism has been a recurring theme in his discussions about the incident, illustrating the profound impact it had on his life. In the aftermath, Mark Harmon downplayed his heroic actions, displaying his characteristic humility. During a 2013 interview, he remarked, I won't take credit for it because if the car explodes and I'm there next to the car, then you're talking about two young boys who don't have a father. This statement encapsulates Harmon's modest nature, as he preferred to highlight the dangers rather than take personal glory for his courageous act. Beyond the immediate heroism of the incident, there are broader themes at play. The incident occurred at a time when Harmon was gaining significant fame through his acting career, particularly on shows like Saint Elsewhere and later NCIS. His willingness to put himself in harm's way for someone else's well-being serves as a stark reminder that celebrities are also ordinary people capable of extraordinary deeds. This event not only demonstrates Harmon's character, but also reinforces the notion that heroism can manifest in everyday situations. It is a testament to the idea that anyone, regardless of their status or background, can rise to the occasion in a moment of crisis. For Colin Specht, the experience is a defining memory, and for Harmon, it remains an example of his values, selflessness, bravery, and humility.
Harmon's legacy extends beyond his television success. His real-life actions demonstrate a commitment to helping others and embodying the qualities of a true hero. As fans reminisce about his contributions to both the entertainment industry and personal lives, it's clear that Mark Harmon is more than just an actor. He is a genuine hero whose impact will be remembered for years to come.